All right, y'all. So this is what we're working with in a lot of areas. The fence is so overgrown right now. You probably can't even see the wire that's up in there. But we have our actual fence is right in there, the old fence. And it's just completely overgrown. There's holes in the fence where animals have made their way through, coyotes and deer. And this kind of wraps all around um, on all four sides of the area we're refencing. So what we're going to do over here is because it would take probably a couple of days to hand clip each and every one of these vines, we're going to take a chainsaw to it. Then we're going to unhook the fence from the posts and we're going to haul it out with the tractor. This is another one of our problem areas. We have a creek that goes through underneath the service road that runs through our property over here. Lulu, come here. And as you can see, there's so much brush that's fallen up against the fence over here that a good foot of everything under the fence right here is just leaves and dirt and it's bending our T-posts. So we're gonna replace all the bent T-posts with new ones. But for the most part, we're reusing as many T-posts as possible to cut down on cost. We're gonna have to take the tractor through here and clear out all of this brush and level out the ground before we come through and roll with the new fence. All right, so I got this mesquite tree over here. I think that's what it is. It's got all these thorns on it, stabbing the crap out of me. But basically, I'm getting in here. I've already taken these off. But these little clips right here I'm bending them back around so I can get the wire off of these T-posts. And then we're going to come through after we take all the wire off, clean out all this brush down here. We actually have like three or four inches of brush. There's more fence down under there if you can see it in the dirt. So we got to dig all that out, clear all this out. It is a messy, messy fence line. So we're going to clean all that up, try to level some of it out as best we can, clean up all these leaves. We'll spray paint these T-posts and then lay the new wire. All right, so this is how I'm taking the staples, the existing staples out of the fence. I cut the wire, used my wire cutters, came up and cut it. And then I'm wedging a flathead screwdriver, an old school one, we don't care if it breaks, back behind this staple and using it to kind of work it out like this, like so. Just pull it back and forth, kind of make a wedge. If there's not enough space in the staples, which there usually isn't, then I'm taking this hammer, hitting the back of the screwdriver, driving it in as a wedge, and then pulling it out. So, let me try to pull that one out real quick. <clears throat> We're reusing these staples, so I'm taking it kind of slow so I can grab them as they come out. Well, lost that one, but that's how you do it. Leo, come here. Come here. Good girl. Stay over here. It's kind of a tricky angle to get the chainsaw in here. So he's taking it slow and being as careful as possible. Stay here, Lulu. There's a lot of thorn bushes in there, so he's kind of getting stabbed.
I know you. He'll get you a stick. Hang on. He needs one without thorns. What happened to the other stick? Did you bring it back? <laughs> Good girl. So now we're going through and taking whatever dead branches we see and fallen branches and trying to pull out as much as we can to again make it safer and easier for him to get in there with the chainsaw. Yeah, he wants to see where the fence is so he doesn't hit it with the chainsaw because it's kind of buried in there. We purposely chose to do this in the winter months when all the greenery had fallen off the tree. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to see where the branches are. So after we finished removing all the fence from this area and trimming it down, we hauled all of the old fence and brush out with the tractor, and then we took the brush hog in between each T-post to try and clean up the ground as much as possible so we can get a nice clean line when we lay the new fence. In addition, I'm taking some Rust-Oleum and I'm spray painting the T-posts a black color just to make it look a little nicer. Say hi, boyfriend. Goofy. All right, so make sure you pay attention to which way the wind is blowing before you start to spray. Ideally, you would spray when it's not a windy day, but that doesn't exist over here. It's always windy. Um, so try to go with the direction of the wind as much as possible. You can only do so much. Remember, these are outdoor tea posts. The paint doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure you use the stoleum. It's great to cover it up and keep the rust from coming through. Um, and remember, since it doesn't have to be perfect, if you have dripping spray paint down the sides, it's not a big deal. The fence is going to cover that up anyway. See how we're nailing the vine in though? <laughs> like, That's alright. It'll just grow back up anyway. I'm gonna hit the phone. So. 